Hey guys, happy Saturday morning. We are in Acts chapter 6. Go ahead and open up the Word and get your cup of water or orange juice or coffee or, or Americano ready. And uh, we're going to dive in. 15 verses here in Acts chapter 6. A little bit shorter, um, so enjoy it because tomorrow will be a marathon. And let's pray and then we will dive in. God, thank you for waking us up today. Thank you for getting our day going. We praise you and thank you for days where we can rest and recover, days where we can reflect on the, the past week and, and how you have been good to us, and uh, days like this to be with family and friends and, and serve our community. God, we ask for your word to speak. Holy Spirit, would you come now? Would you fill us with what we need for today? Would you give us insight? Would you give us a vision for our lives today and how we can spend it on you? in your kingdom. So God, we are excited to see you right now in Acts chapter 6. And Jesus, we pray this in your name. Amen. Here we go. Verse 1. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven from among you who do not, who are not known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith. And we'll read about him um, a little bit uh, here, here in a little bit, and certainly tomorrow. And of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, uh, Procurius, and yeah, that's a tough one. This next one, uh, Timon. Uh, Par, uh, Parmenius, Nicholas from Antioch, a, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men, although their names were very hard to pronounce, they, they presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. Verse 7, so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests even became obedient to the faith. That is unbelievable what is happening here in verse 7. Verse 8, now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene of Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia. These men began to argue with Stephen. I love verse 10. But they could not stand up against his wisdom or the spirit whom he spoke. Bam! Spike your Bible. Uh, no, don't do that. That's awesome. Verse 11, when they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak words of blasphemy against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. This is the word of God. And, I mean, there's only 15 verses here, but this absolutely fires me up. There's a lot going on, and, and the thing that really stands out to me, the thing that really jumps off the page is there uh, at the end of verse 3 and verse 4. And I'll just read it. Here, here's what jumps out to me. We will turn this responsibility over to them, and we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. There is nothing um, in the world like focus. There's nothing in the world like understanding the way that God has wired you up and doing everything that you can to give your very best to those things. And I know firsthand um, there are times where we are trying to do so many things and we get scattered, right? We get divided. And the truth is we give our energy to 10 things instead of maybe a few things. And we are adequate at all of those things instead of becoming great at maybe just a few things. And I, typically principles like this that I'm describing, uh, you'll read in business books. Um, and I, I, I read a lot of business books. Uh, but this absolutely applies as well within the church. Uh, a misconception for a long time is that just a few people need to do all the work or just a few people are gifted enough and just a few people are pastoral enough to do everything. Now, I'm going to talk about that tomorrow at church and the priesthood of all believers eradicates that. 
Um, and this is what Luther fought for, right? But this is a misconception. And what we see happen in the early church is a few people here in chapter 6 were doing all the work. And the apostles had the wisdom to call a time out and just say, this isn't working. Um, we have a vision that is so much bigger than this city. We have a vision because Jesus told us to move from here to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the world. He commissioned us to go to the corners of the world. And we will not go if we continue to operate like this. So we need to change things. We need to get more people into the game. We need people to serve in their areas of passion and giftedness. And this is exactly what happens here in chapter 6. And this is, to me, what, what jumps off the page. I, I mean, one, the proposal pleased the whole group. But then we saw there in verse 7, so the word of God spread. It wasn't stagnant. It spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem didn't decrease. No, it increased. And then a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. And here's what happens. Here's what happens. When more people get in the game in a local church, the influence and impact of the gospel spreads. When, when you know, the responsibility and opportunity is not just with a few people, but when it begins to be um, spread to a number of people, the effectiveness of that church spreads. Now, we're a church of just over 300 people, and that's awesome. We praise God for that. We are, we're blown away by that. And the reason, I think, in seven months or so that we've grown to a church of over 300 is because there's about 160 to 70 people in the game, serving and using their gifts. Those two things are absolutely connected. And when I think about the vision, we have a vision much bigger than where we're at today. We do. And we didn't come up with this. This wasn't our idea. But God has put in front of us a vision to reach the 10. A vision to see the 10 radically impacted and influenced for the kingdom of God. And the only way that's going to happen, the only way we will advance, the only way we will move forward is to begin to do what we see happen here in Acts chapter 6. Those of you watching uh, on video this morning, I want to challenge you. Are you in the game? Are you serving? Are you using your gifts? Uh, we really dream of the day when there's no sidelines at our church, that you will begin to uh, explore and you will begin to dream of ways that God could use your life to impact the lives of other people in our church, in our community. Are you in the game? Are you using your gifts? And one thing that I hope that we continue to move forward on is continuing to focus that all of us aren't trying to do a million different things, but that we can do a few things according to our passion, according to our gifts, and according to what God is burdening us with. We can do those things very well. And our prayer is that this thing will spread, not our name, but the name of God, that people will continue to find and follow him. So th this is what's standing out. I, I didn't think I was going to get that excited this morning, right? But it is Saturday, and God's word is alive, and it is active, and chapter 6 of Acts absolutely fires me up. Here's the application. The application is this for me. What is one thing I need to stop doing? What is one thing right now I need to stop doing so that someone else can start doing? I want you to reflect on that right now. And, and that can be in, in so many different realms. That could be as you lead your business, as you lead your home, whatever that might be. What would it look like for you to grow in focus? What's one thing that you need to stop doing? And the prayer is going to be for us to trust, as they trusted in Acts chapter 6, that there are capable, reliable people waiting in the wings to step into things that we're holding on to that they can do and actually probably do even better than we're currently doing today so that at the end of the day, the kingdom of God advances and does not stay stagnant, but it moves forward and we see new people reached. We see new families blessed. We see new neighborhoods experience and realize that God is love and he is here even in the tent. Have an awesome Saturday. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning, right, via video and live at Mission Church. Have a great day. God bless.